three, two, Stacked inside the fairing is Elon's cherry red Tesla Roadster, and inside of it, a passenger. His name is Starman, but don't worry, he's not human. But he is donning the SpaceX-designed spacesuit that our human astronauts will be wearing on Crew Dragon. Now, in addition to the Roadster, you might also catch a glimpse of a smaller passenger, which is a tiny little Hot Wheel Roadster carrying a tiny little Starman, which is a little Easter egg for today's mission, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Secured inside the Roadster is another really special passenger, called an ARC. An ARC is a 5D laser optical quartz storage device, which is essentially a high-tech, high-data storage unit that can survive in the harsh environment of space. It's built by the ARC Mission Foundation, which is an organization whose purpose is to store libraries of human knowledge and data on these devices and send them off into space with interplanetary travelers, thus preserving human achievements well beyond Earth. On the ARC that's being launched today, the Foundation has stored Isaac Asimov's classic sci-fi series, The Foundation Trilogy, which was the original inspiration for the ARC mission. And given that making humanity a multi-planetary species is the core purpose of SpaceX, launching an ARC on this mission just seemed fitting. And last but certainly not least, a little something special for our hard-working SpaceX team. Mounted on the payload attach fitting, which is the structure that holds the Roadster onto the second stage, there's a plaque on which the names of over 6,000 of our SpaceX employees are engraved. The work that goes into designing, building, testing, and launching a vehicle of this sort is no small feat. And we are super excited to be a part of the Roadster's billion-year journey through the solar system. If you can hear me over the cheering, duck and heavy heading to space on our test flight, building on the history of Saturn V Apollo, returning pad 39A to interplanetary mission. We're getting ready to throttle down to a max Q. Vehicle is supersonic. You've heard the call out. Vehicle is supersonic. A major event coming up Second with course, side booster down. shutdown and separation. And so shut down. Side boosters. Vehicle. Center. Which is up here. We will throw them up. Successful separation. We're coming up on Nico and shutdown. Stay safe. Good recognition. Big big burn looks good on side boosters. Back on startup. Coming up on fairing separation. MVAC-D continuing its burn. Uh, on the upper left, you have the center core headed back towards the autonomous spaceport drone ship. And in the two bottom screens, you've got the side boosters headed back towards Cape Canaveral Air Force Station landing zones one and two. The next step coming up for the side boosters and the center booster uh, is the re-entry burn. Uh, that's going to slow it down from uh, or slow all the boosters down from way faster than the speed of sound to just faster than the speed of sound uh, in order to reduce some of those aerodynamic forces and heating that occurs when you're moving that quickly through the atmosphere. And as you can see on your screen, that re entry burn goes through side boosters. The 
Centrigore in the upper left of your screen performing its own re-entry burn. You can see the, the edge of Cape Canaveral in uh, both of the side booster cameras as those are coming in. Yes, and PY and NY side boosters have saved. Center core entry burn shut down. Uh, and even though those look very similar, those two boosters' uh, views, those are actually representing different boosters. Um, and they're heading towards Earth. They're about to begin their landing burns. We'll hopefully be able to bring you nice footage of that. Both side boosters transonic. And watch for the landing lights to play at the tail end of that landing burn. Looking to be on track towards their respective landing zones. Side boosters' landing legs have started. Side boosters' landing legs have deployed. And the Falcon have landed. Wow. LZ1 and LZ2, both side boosters have touched down. Landing out for those moving into 11 by 11. Hello, everyone, and we're going to 8 2 8 2 Check on your screen, sometimes this footage goes out when it approaches the drone ship and the heavy vibrations make it lose signal. We're crossing our fingers, that's not the case right now. Stage two, nominal parking orbit insertion. Uh, so it looks like that landing is happening at the moment. We have lost signal. The center core uh, <laughs> Obviously, it didn't land on the drone ship, we would have shown that. Um, apparently, it hit the water at 300 miles an hour um, and uh, took out two of the engines on the drone ship. So, if we, if we got the footage, like, that sounds like some pretty fun footage. Um, so, if, <laughs> if the cameras didn't get blown up as well, then we'll, we'll put that out um, for, uh, you know, just the blooper reel. Um, but that, that's near the end. We weren't going to reuse the set, that, that center core anyway. Uh, yeah, this means that the Roadster will be tracing the shape of an ellipse with the sun at one of its fixed points or one of its foci. Now, we call this heliocentric because it is sun-centered. The outermost distance on that same ellipse will intersect the path that Mars takes while it is on its own journey around the sun. That's quite far away. That will reach a maximum distance from Earth of over 400 million kilometers. In Earth terms, that's about the same as a trip around the equator 10,000 times.